everyone. Just wait a second, see if you guys are getting on. It's Thursday afternoon here. It's a beautiful sunny day and my kids are still inside in their rooms and I just sent them a message saying, you have to be up and out by the time I'm done with this video. What is hysterical is that I text my children now all the time. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can relate. But I am so lucky to have this studio outside of my house. So I am in here all day, every day, and then that way I don't have to see what they're doing. So I'm excited about today because I have a lot to share with you. And I went through some old journals this morning and I found some really cool things that I did with some lettering that I want to show you as well. And yesterday we did our class on the how to make a demo. So that was really fun. How to make a demo. How to make an art journal. That was really fun. And I posted that already on my YouTube channel. So if you want to go back and check it out, that's great. And you might, it might take you a while to get the piece of paper you want to work with. You could also be creative and just cut up regular paper that you have, an old sketchbook if you want, and you can just re jiggy it around to make your own, or just use your own scrap paper to work on some ideas. And then you can always cut them out and use them on a later journal. So, what I did last night after um, we left was I took my journal and I painted it and I did half in watercolors and I did half in acrylic inks. So I'm gonna show you guys that and then I'm going to walk through some lettering that I wanna do and share some other stuff with you guys today. So hang on and I'm gonna flip you. I'm back at my other table. This one has a better tripod for me to flip you upside down. And you missed my, um, if you get on my Instagram stories, you'll see my chicken is 11 today. And I know that because we got our very first chicken when my nephew was born and he turned 11 today. And this one chicken out of three is still alive. We have five of them, but the original chicken is still with us. And so this morning I let them out. I let them free range a little bit more than normal. And he is literally over. She is, <laughs> she is literally was by my art studio squawking away. So I put her in, I put her back in her coop. That so much for her birthday romp. So hold on. All right. I'm going to flip you guys and I'm going to show you my pages that are prepped prepped and ready. Let's see. I think that's pretty good. Yep. Okay. So what I did was <clears throat> I took the front pages and I did watercolor and I wanted you guys to see the difference. So watercolor, and I believe this one could be watercolor. The paper I use is watercolor paper. So what I did was I put some water down and this is all watercolor and isn't that cute? It's like a little heart. It just happened on its own. But I literally just took a big fat brush and dunked it in here, a lot of water, and did like just, you know, did this and let them dry before I did this page. That one was dry. So I did it over the course of a few hours. So this is watercolor. This one is a blue and a pink. And then I did some greens. And you guys, I can't even remember. I think <laughs> I think this one is ink. So the difference is, is that the inks are a little bit brighter. They're more vibrant. And all of them can be used to create your lettering. And what I wanted to do was have different colors for each page. So this one is now we're in the inks. And I wanted to show you some inks that I use. This one is an Amsterdam ink. And then I used the De La Rowney and I also use some Liquitex. So all of these inks, you just need a tiny bit and then you can spray them with water and use a sponge brush to get everything down or a wide, or a wide brush. So these are some bright ones. Okay, so the brights are on this side. I thought that was really fun. And then what I did was in these few pages, so this one, and these, I and this one, I ended up putting my inks down and then blending it with the titanium white, which I really like to do. One, it gets my pages lighter, 
which can, then I can use all different types of markers on there, some you know marker colors that may not show up on other pages. But it's really um, kind of neat to have some different gradients going on. So this was done with the Liquitex blue and that white. And then this was that process magenta. And then adding the white, just put some light pinks down. So that was really cute. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this aside because I wanna show you some lettering that I found in some of my older journals. My little desk is getting wrecked. So this was, I don't know if you heard me or remember me saying, let me just make sure I'm good here. Okay, I think I'm good. <laughs> this, well, first of all, these are the sketchbooks that I talked about, uh, maybe it was last week. Uh, I have a smaller one now. These are the Ranger Dilution sketchbooks. And I love, love, love them. They, you can put things in this little envelope. The paper is fantastic. It's nice and thick. It opens up flat. You can get these on Amazon. And I wanted to show you this spread. One, it was my very first on online class I ever did. It was with Jane Davenport and Tisha Moore, and it was the Mermaid Circus. So all my art at that time was mermaids. And all of this is hand-cut collage. So little pieces of magazines and, and papers cut out. And then a lot of this is uh, markers right on top of papers and the reason I wanted to show you this is, I, th I don't know, I think I might have made that up. I have no idea. But I wanted to show you the lettering. This, this is probably like six years old. So the lettering was done with a black pen, the black pit pens, and I probably had a thicker one or at the time, this S would have been too thin. And then I highlighted the outside. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see, I'm gonna zoom in. Can you see that? The outline was done in different like purples and then the Fair Maiden, I think I did another paint pen on top. So you can see, I'm gonna do a little shimmer, 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 shimmer. Hopefully there's no little kid see my naked mermaid and not be too offended. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, so that's one page. And then this page, and if Donna is on the line, she knows how much I love John Donahue. This is a poem from John Donahue, who is a fantastic, beautiful Irish poet. He's no longer with us, but he has some amazing poetry out there. So look him up, and this one is one of my favorite poems ever. Um, and so what I did was, and this is what I'm gonna show you guys later too, is I do these lines, I draw the lines first, and then I write inside the lines. And we're gonna, that's exactly what I'm gonna show you guys, um, because you, you can do so many different types of writing styles, that's just one that Tisha Moore does and taught me, and I love it, and it kinda just makes it easier to get all your letters in and your, um, and your and your words down without kind of having it wander. You have it already set of how thick you want your lines to be. So we're gonna look at that. But this one I love, and I think at one point I turned these into little note cards way back in the day. Okay, so this is a trip that I did with our kids in Big Sur years ago, or no, how long? yeah, this was Big Sur, because I have it over here, Big Sur, this is a road trip. I have no idea what this says, I was laughing, but this tree was gigantic, and there are my one of my kids' boys' feet, and I called it Bigfoot, but this is Kerr Creek, Big Sur, and it was that same kind of writing where I did the lines first, and then I did my letters in between the lines. And that was really fun. I love this bar, uh, part of the end. I'm having, but in, let's see, tables at the beach, bike rides, dirt, dirt everywhere, but in a good way. I'm having lots and lots of giggles. So that was good. So this book, I have a few of these and but they're not all full, but I do love to go back and see what's, see what I used to do. So fun. All right, this is another one I wanted to show you that is, Shine like the whole universe is yours. I also love Rumi. I like 
the way you can take a quote and have some words big and some in between small and different colors. So maybe they'll give you some inspiration to, to do a quote like that. And maybe one of our lives, I'll go through these books with you guys too. So one thing I like to do when I get started, let me just make sure I'm centered. One thing I like to do when I get started is find my quote. And a few ways that I find my quotes are, I'm gonna see if this, you guys can see this. Can you see this? I love Pinterest and I have a Pinterest board that's just for inspiration. And um, I love different quotes and I love the way, I love to get inspired to see how other people write them. Like if I just Google quotes, it's just straight copy, but I love to see how other people sort of do their lettering and style them. And so the one I want to do today is a quote by Vincent Van Gogh. There's nothing more truly artistic than to love people. I mean, that is so sweet. And so I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna put that quote. I looked at the page, I'm gonna put this quote on this page. So one of the things that you can do is I think about the letters and the words and then I just sketched it out over here and because I want to encourage you guys to do this because taking letters and just starting to write what I used to do was I would start to write it and then I'd either run out of room or it was too squished on one side so now I think about my lettering as an actual image so I think about how is it gonna fit on the page where am I gonna start it and where am I going to end it so I just felt like, okay, I'm gonna do six lines. So I'm gonna have, I feel that is one line. There's nothing, one line. More truly, one line. Artistic, I felt like that was a really big part of this quote. So I want that to spread across. Van two, one line, love people. And then I'll put Van Gogh's name in here. So I start with where I wanna put my lettering and I take a pencil and I'm going to draw in lightly these sort of waves, okay? And your waves don't have to be and shouldn't be the same size. That kind of defeats the purpose of making it really interesting. So my waves are different sizes. I don't even know if they're called waves, whatever you want to call it. Lines, curvies. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm hoping too, when I'm done with this, I can lightly erase it. And if you can't erase it, that is no problem either. In fact, I wanted to show you if I can find it, one of Tisha Moore's that she, let me just look real quick, see if I can find it. I don't think that's the book. But often in her work, her li let's see, her lines are, are part of it. And that's part of her look. Let's see if I can find it. I have this little book here of hers. She's an amazing artist, so go check her out too. Of course I can't, oh, here we go. So her lines are part of her journaling. Now these aren't as curvy as the ones I'm doing today, but like if you wanted to write a passage about, you know, how you're feeling or what you did or how you, what you did on vacation or what you ate for dinner, you can just do regular lines, especially if you're feeling intimidated by just going straight onto a page to write. So now I'm gonna show you some of my yummy markers. What I like to do is pick a color that's obviously darker than the color of the paper. And so I'm probably gonna go with this deep purple, if not black, and start by putting my words down. And then I'll probably highlight it. But I wanted to show you a couple markers that I love. They're not cheap, but they are amazing. So I have some Copics that are different types of widths. So you have this on the one end and then like a brush stroke on the other or and they smell good too. Same sort of chisel at one end and this is a smaller tip 
on that side. And then the other markers that I love are these Tombos. So I have quite a little collection of these and I take them everywhere I go when I travel and I use them all the time in my book. And these markers are what I did all in here. The only watercolor I did was in the background. So all of this right here is done with the markers. And then my kids started using them <laughs> and I had to put them on a ration. Like, no, no, you can use one today because they are fun. They're great markers. So, and if you don't have fancy pants markers, you don't have to worry about that either. Just use anything you have. So I'm gonna start by putting down my lettering. Now you may wanna put it in pencil. That's completely fine, whatever you wanna do. And remember, this is just for fun. It's not gonna be framed. Um, but a tip that Tisha taught us is amazing, all right? So I start with my first letter of my sentence, and then I'm gonna put my last letter of my sentence at the same time right away so that I know how much space I have between my lines. I mean, on my first line, I know how much space, so I'm not all crammed up in the front. So I'm just going to put in, and you guys talking to you, I'll probably misspell something or forget a word. I've done that before in one of my lives, so you'll just have to go with it and then I'll have to paint over the page. <laughs> okay, so I've got I, and I know I'm gonna have feel that, okay? And so those are four letters, four letters. So again, start to think of your words as images and, and objects, and that will help you kind of balance yourself out. So I'm gonna make sure that I have a T at the end, and I like to have lower and uppercase, uppercase letters at the same time, and you could even do cursive on one word and you really mix it up to have fun. So I've got I and T, and now I'm gonna do feel. And the main thing is you wanna stay in between these two lines, because if you start to go below the line, then the next line gets all messed up with it. You know, it will, they'll not look great. Okay, so I've got my F, and again, I'm kind of looking and mentally thinking, okay, I think I want my T to start here. So you can really get a feel for it as an image. Okay, so I'm gonna make that L a little bit longer to kind of broaden my space here. So I feel, and then I think I'm gonna start my T here. And what happens is if I had just started writing I feel, I already know with, because I did, I probably did my two E's too close together that I would probably end up, ended up right here. And that's fine too. I mean, it doesn't really matter. This is just a way to do something different. So I'm thinking like, how do I want my A? Do I want a capital? I don't think so. And I like to go all the way up to some of these lines too. So I think I'm gonna do a big fat A this way. And sometimes I go to the top of the line and sometimes I don't. And maybe we'll do that in another line. Okay, so I feel that. And hopefully people can read my that. It's a little funky. And you'll be able to go over your letters with other marker colors and you can embellish it you can do paint pens around the outside dots okay so i feel that now we're going to put in there is nothing so there and nothing are about the same um amount of letters a little bit off but they're close so the is is probably going to fall right in the middle so again, I'm gonna start my T and I'm gonna go just to the top here. 
Okay, I got the T here, and I wanna go to my G here. Okay, and this is a little G, meaning it's a little space I have, okay? And then I'm gonna work on there and try to make sure I'm done and I've got space for is. If anybody's jumping on right now, they're probably thinking, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> okay, there. And you know, going between capitals and lowercase, they're so different. Each letter is so different if it's a lower and if it's an um, uppercase. Like I love capital R's over the little R's. Okay, I feel that there. And I'm gonna do is right here. Make sure you can see that uh, that eye, the dot on the eye. All right, and then I'm gonna start my nothing. So I think I'll do a lowercase n. And now I'm really watching my space here. I'm gonna do an uppercase H. Okay, so far so good. I haven't misspelled anything. Okay, I feel that there is nothing. Now this one's gonna be just two words and I think I'm not gonna start it here and here. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit. That also gives it, you know, just a different feel and having it all spread out. So I'm gonna do my M and my Y. I wonder if you guys can see this. I'm gonna, this is my little, my M and my Y. Now, often I will just go right onto my paper without doing a little sketch first, but I really wanted to make sure I didn't screw this up for you guys. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing this this way. All right, so on this more, I'm gonna do a lowercase r. And I gotta make sure I give enough space for my T for truly. So, gonna finish that and then do my T. And I think I'll do a lowercase t. All right, now I gotta get my Y in, I mean my L in there. So here's my U. And I think I'll tuck that L in here. So I feel that there's nothing more truly. And what I wanted to do with artistic is I wanted to really stretch it out. So I'm gonna start my A here. And what I think I'll end up doing is when I'm all done is take a really bright paint pen and embellish the letters. And if you wanna hold on with me, I can show you how I do that. So I've got my two letters at the end and I want to stretch it out. So I got A R A R T I S T I. So you could end up putting in your middle letters just to, to kind of make sure you're on track. Let's see if I can do it. I already know I'm a little bit too close to the A. So what you can do is I'm now stretching out my R. I'm going to put my I here. And now I've got a T and a T and an I and an S. So I'm going to make this T pretty wide. I, S, T, okay? So now I'm down to two letters. So I probably that R was too close, but I'm going to see what I can do by really stretching out my S. Hmm. 
<laughs> I gotta really stretch out my teeth, but that's all right. <laughs> Hopefully people can read it. Artistic. So then I'm gonna do than to love people, or I could do than to love people. So I think what I'll do is than to love people here and put Van Gogh's name here. It looks better there, but I think it will be too small. So I'm gonna try this. So I'm gonna move over to the edge here with the T and then end it with the E. And I think I will do this E for this one. Change up my letters, my lower and upper. Van to love people who could be tight. So I'm gonna make my two on the smaller side. Now, one thing you could do to start collecting your inspirations is besides Pinterest, if you ever see a quote anywhere in a magazine or something, just cut it out. If you ever see a quote on your Facebook or your Instagram, just take a screenshot. I do that too. And then just save them. And then just start putting them in your journal. Then to love people. Okay, so I've got my P. E-O-P-L-E, -E. let's see. Do you guys ever look at your letters and then it doesn't even look like words anymore? They just look like, I don't even know what. So I've got, and I think I'm gonna put this in quotes cause he, that's his quote. I'll put little quote marks there. And then I'm gonna put Van Gogh here. We'll put his whole name, Vincent Van Gogh. So my van will probably be somewhere in the middle. I find that doing lettering is very, very therapeutic. You, ha you have to concentrate on the letters. So it really does block so much of the busyness and the noise and everything that's going on out. So I kind of got that too big and then I got little Van Gogh here, so. We will make it happen. You can make things skinny. And I'll show you another thing I can do to make it visually centered. So I got my Van Gogh. Okay, so this is a tiny bit over here. So what I'm gonna do is make a dash and then it sort of centered itself. So this was a purple, but what I wanna do now is go in and pull out some words. So I've got my Pascal pen here. I'm gonna pick a different color too. So I've got, you know, the orange background. Let's see, I've got my little tubs of, did I show you guys all my fun markers? I scored. So the thing about when you get a paint pen is you do have to shake it and you'll start to see, you'll start to see some of the paint come through. So bear with me, get my purple going. Here it is, it's coming now. 
you can start to see it come down. Once once the ink has started to come down, it should be good for other times. Watch, after all this work, it will be too dark. <laughs> but once you have your paint pen going, you could then embellish by doing shadows. I love to do shadows. And so how you do little shadows is you pick a, you pick a side. You're either gonna go left or you're gonna go right. And you can just draw in some blocking. This will make your letters pop, especially if you want one word to pop more than other, you can use another color. I feel that. So I think I want to do that and then keep artistic a different color. So I'm just going to quickly block in my letters. So just stay to the left or to the right. And don't forget your insides. So one of my very first jobs was doing lettering and I did it in college. Well, one of my first jobs besides high school, it was in college and it was to hand letter the menus. <laughs> that was back in the day. And then my very first job out of college, I would hand letter all the signs in this retail store because the owner had the same writing style I did. So I got hired to make signs. Okay, so I feel that there is nothing. And you can do some really fun things at this point too with your lettering. You can take your paint pens or your markers. You don't have to do paint pens. You could do what I'm doing with markers. That is just as easy. I'm gonna save the artistic. You can make little tiny dots in some of these letters. You can make the letters different colors or the words different colors. Every other word could be a different color. You could make lines. You could do, you know, take stripes and do stripes up and down the first letter. So many fun things. Think of the lettering as part of your art. And then I think Vincent Van Gogh, I'll put in a different color too. So I thought I had my white going. Oh, good, I do. Okay, so let's see, we still there? Yep. All right, so for artistic, I think I'm going to go around the whole thing. That's the word that I want to pop. And once this is all dry, if the lines bother you, you just erase it with a, you know, probably like a kneaded eraser or a soft eraser. Don't use the end of a pencil because I think that would mark it up. Often too, I will doodle all around my letters, turn them into flowers. Okay, so I feel that there is nothing more truly artistic than to love people. Oh, Vincent. Okay, and so I'm going to do another color for Vincent. I think I'm going to go with silver and go right over his letters. So this is a Sharpie. And it's fat enough that I'm going over the letters. And, I'm, and a little bit of this black underneath is giving it a tiny bit of a shadow.
And there you have it. All right, so hold on, I'm gonna flip you back around. Stay with me. Don't go. Too bad I can't sing to you guys. I'm a really terrible singer. Okay, good. All right, so now we have our book and, oh my, oh my gosh, I'm about to fall over. Now we have our book and then I'm gonna probably start working in the insides and just doing some fun things. And I think what I'll do is, for our lives that we have, um, for the lives that we're gonna have probably the whole month of April, I will work in this book. And wait, there's a question here. So make sure you let me know if you have a question. Roxanne, do you have a favorite brand of acrylic ink? Oh, I do. I love this brand, Daler Rowney. And they, they ran into some trouble and stopped making them and started making them again. I feel like you may not be able to find these everywhere, but you can definitely find them on um, Amazon or, or Blix. Amsterdam also has been making them since then, and I'm not the biggest fan of Amsterdam, and I can't tell you why, and it might be because I think these colors are brighter. And I love taking my inks, and I love mixing them with acrylic paint, and also that white paint. And here's the titanium, and that white paint's great. And what I'm gonna do next week is start a new painting, and I'll show you guys how I use some of my inks and stuff like that. So, I hope you guys liked your little lettering lesson, and make sure you show me. You can always message me something that you guys have created. Don't forget to look on Pinterest and just type in inspiration, inspirational quotes, and you'll see a ton of quotes come up. And, um, and I have a couple other things I wanna share with you. I am so excited. Tomorrow launches my very first art online class. And about, let's see, it was November. So four or five months ago, Jean Oliver asked if I would create a class that could be taught on her site. So I was beyond excited. And I have been working on this class for weeks and it's called Colorful Joy. And you guys will hear me chatting away about it. <laughs> Thanks, Sandra. You'll hear me so much. In fact, you'll be like, can you stop? But it means so much to me to have done this class because all of 2019, I kept thinking, like, what's my big dream for me next? What's my next big dream? And my next big dream is to be able to share the way I paint and inspire people with color. And um, this was a dream come true to be able to do this class. Jean is so gracious and I'm so excited to be on her site. So if you guys haven't heard of Jean Oliver, she also has a big community of other artists that uh, create classes and they're there. And um, I'm really excited about it. So I'll be sharing like tons of stuff about that in our, in our classes. I mean, in our lives. And it's just the stepping stone for me. I'm gonna be creating tons. So uh, if you guys ever think of something you want me to do a class on too, let me know. So that's one thing. And then I wanna pull, I wanna pull one of our cards. And I was thinking that I might take some of these cards that we've been pulling and doing that as my lettering too. It's sort of an idea to do some lettering. All right, so I'm just gonna pull one. Can't see them, just gonna grab one. Okay, let's see what this one is. Okay, we already had that one, that doesn't count. I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> or maybe it's really, 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 really for us. Okay, okay, I don't think we've had this one because I don't recognize it. All right, oh, all this healing stuff for us, okay. This is so crazy, because these cards are about so many different things. True healing occurs when I give my, okay, start over. True healing occurs when I give myself permission to feel whatever feelings live below the triggers. Oh my God. So yesterday, I mentioned to you guys that I had, like I was bawling half of the day. And it's so important. Okay, I'm gonna do this. It's so important, especially right now, to give in to all of those feelings that you guys, I know you must be having, because we're all having them. We're all in this together. The whole entire world's feeling like this. So whatever triggers you have, whatever feelings you have, lean into them and go for it. And 
cry, laugh, do whatever you need to do and find some joyful spots too. And, um, and I hope you guys get some, get some laughs in today somehow. There's some really funny things online that lots of memes that make me laugh. So anyway, I'm glad you guys came today and I'm excited about next week. I think I'm gonna do um, my new painting and walk you guys through some of that process. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. We're going on a family field trip tomorrow. I don't know where we're going. It will be definitely isolated though. I'm not too sure. Some hike in a mountain. So fingers crossed I'm back in home in my art studio sooner than later. And I will see you guys soon. Okay. Have a fantastic day. Mwah! Lots of love. Be safe. Talk to you soon. Bye.